Good morning. Today is Sunday, January 15th, 2023. The Mishnah Brura was written by Rabbi Yisrael Meir Kagan of Radin, also known as the Chavetz Chaim. It was written in the early 1900s, and it is a classic and authoritative work on practical Jewish law. He writes in Hilchus Yom Kippur, the laws concerning Yom Kippur were required to fast on Yom Kippur. He writes, if you ask a rabbi on Yom Kippur itself, if you are allowed to break the fast due to an illness, and because of the delay in asking due to the time it takes to find the rabbi and to ask, and there is a negative consequence as a result of that delay, then the rabbi is responsible for the harm because he did not sufficiently teach the guidelines before Yom Kippur. Had he sufficiently and completely taught the guidelines before Yom Kippur, this person would not come to him on Yom Kippur to have to ask, and the treatment could begin quicker. When I reviewed this passage after I became a rabbi, I thought to myself, Chavetz Chaim, come on. Rabbis are already blamed for everything. If the food at Kiddush is too salty, it's my fault. If the toilet in shul is backed up, it's my fault. If someone, God forbid, suffers a tragedy, it's my fault because they can't yell at God with satisfaction, so they take it out on me. And by the way, these are not just random examples. These are things, among many, many more, that have happened to me many to multiple times during my career so far. And now... If someone is harmed because they didn't know if someone was allowed to break their fast on Yom Kippur, that's also my fault? Come on, Chavetz Chaim, give me a break. But of course, the Chavetz Chaim is right. It is my fault. And that is the reason that I try to frequently review these rules, these guidelines, these halachos relating to Yom Kippur and to Shabbos, and other situations. Oh, so just to oversimplify what we have discussed in the past, and certainly we'll study again in the future, for a lesser potential danger, only rabbinic prohibitions are set aside. And for more serious potential problems, all prohibitions are set aside. So, we have to learn and be clear on the standards, the limits, how to apply this. It's a lot of details, but we need to know it. We have to study it. But this morning, I want to take a step back and share with you a more elemental view and aspect of this subject. In the past several weeks, I have set aside the laws of Shabbos twice for medical emergencies to help other people going through them. Both situations worked out fine, and both people today are fine. Baruch Hashem, thank God. In one case, after the fact, the, potent the patient, the person, needed no treatment. It was just a scare. It was a false alarm. In the other case, the patient did need treatment, which was quickly and easily and effectively given. But without that treatment, there could have been a bad outcome. But here's the point I want to make. It would not be correct to say that my decision to set aside Shabbos was right. My decisions to set aside Shabbos were right half the time. Because the standard for setting aside Shabbos or Yom Kippur or anything else is not evaluated by the outcome. It's not evaluated by what we find out in the end, but rather whether there was the potential of the problem when the question was asked. The standard for setting aside mitzvot for safety and health is not illness 
which is a lower level, or a threat to life, which of course is a higher level, but rather the possibility of illness or threat to life if left untreated. Those are both important caveats. Number one, it is the possibility, suffix akonosifashos, not a certainty, but the possibility of a threat. And number two, the situation, if left untreated, could reach that, even though there is a treatment easily and quickly available. That's the first lesson I want to share with you, a crucial, crucial lesson. There's also a second lesson from these two instances that I encountered. In one case, I had immediate access to a medical professional I could consult who gave me his expert opinion on the level of risk that that patient faced. And my decision was made based on the input of that professional. In the other case, I was in a remote location and I had no access to a medical professional unless I set aside the laws of Shabbos. I only had my own layperson level of knowledge about the possible condition and its consequences. In both cases, a person must use the knowledge and resources that are immediately available, which can vary widely. There's a principle in Jewish law which is relevant here. Ein lo ledayon elamasha enav roos. A judge must judge based on what their eyes see. In other words, certainly in this case, a person has to evaluate whether to set aside Shabbos or Yom Kippur or another mitzvah based on what they see and know at that moment. If at that moment, based on the information immediately available to you, you determine there is the possibility of either illness or threat to life if untreated, then set the applicable mitzvah aside quickly and with full confidence you did the right thing, even if it turns out later there was actually no problem. My friends, I want to wish you a great day a safe and healthy day, and I look forward to seeing you soon in person.